Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is the Indie Game of the Week, Armacrog, and thank you for watching. Armacrog is a good old-fashioned point-and-click adventure style game, guys, but with amazing claymation, guys. Matter of fact, that is kind of the driving factor behind this game, guys, is the amazing art style, the amazing stop-motion animation, guys. You can definitely see there was a lot of love and passion poured into this game. I don't have the talent to do what these people did, and it's a really awesome looking game, and you can definitely just see the work and everything that is in this game. Now, the game has been delayed a couple of times, and you can definitely kind of see why in the game itself. But guys, I don't think this stops Armacrog from being an amazing title. And it's definitely one you should check out for sure, guys. Especially if you're a fan of point-and-click adventure style games, guys. Armacrog released on Steam September 2015. It was developed by Pencil Test Studios and published by Versus Evil. You can go ahead and get Armacrog on Steam for $24.99, guys. Now, we're going to go ahead and check out the options and all that good stuff, guys. You can always click on that big red box up there. It says skip to the action. It'll take you directly to the gameplay. A couple things I want to say first, though, is that I'm not too terribly familiar about the history of this game. I know that this was some sort of like a spiritual remake to another adventure game. I'm not really going to be talking about that all that much. I'm more interested in what does this game present? What does it show to me? Is this game fun? That's what's important to me. I'm not looking at the history yet. I'm not looking about what the news was, if it was, how it was delayed, none of that stuff. Even though I mentioned it at the beginning, what's more important to me is, is this game fun? Is it, is there something I really enjoy about this game? Is it beautiful? Yes. Is it fun? We're going to get into that. So, we're going to start off with the options, of course. Now, this is where things get a little weird. This is where I'm like, okay, you can see where things were kind of delayed and maybe some attention need to be paid a little bit more to certain areas. Uh, the game does have a startup menu <clears throat> when you first start, which allows you to kind of change your resolution. Um, and I think to a certain extent, there's even a little bit of rebindable keys in that in that particular screen. But that's basically it. And as far as in-game options go, this is where you actually load into the game or save. And this is definitely a weird saving mechanic, I will say that much. Um, it's it, You'll see why in a bit. Like, it doesn't even tell you if you saved properly. It's just a very strange save mechanic. There's a lot of things that just feel like it's it's slightly unpolished when it comes to the options menus and certain other areas. Mind you, there's other areas of the game that feel extremely well polished and are really awesome, uh, but it looks like it just kind of used even just a little bit more time under the you know under the hood under you know under maintenance to get things completely finished. I feel, but you do have some subtitles on and off option here, and you can save your game and all that good kind of stuff. I'm actually going to hit start new game because I kind of want you guys to see that opening uh, animation because that's going to drive in the point that this game is really awesome and really neat with what it's trying to pull off here. Yeah, this game is a great soundtrack. I can just tell you that right off the bat. I love the soundtrack. I love the sound effects and the voice acting. Okay, okay, Beak Beak. I'm just glad we're still alive. Mm, yeah, me too. Now, let's get a look at the hull. Yeah, this does not look good. I don't think our pot insurance is gonna cover this. Our deductible is nuts too. 
Beak Peak. Look at that. What do you make of this guy? Ooh, and I'm like. <laughs> of course. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Beaky. Uh, Beaky will help. By the way, if his voice sounds familiar, that's Mike J. Nelson's voice from uh, Mystery Science Theater. Rift Tracks. Nice, nice work, work, little, little wing, wing buddy. buddy. Hey, that's what I'm here for. Looks good enough for me. Let's go in. Yeah, hold on, hold on. We don't know what's inside. There could be Carpathian brain suckers or even... <laughs> and thus starts our adventure, basically. Beaky. What is this place? Got me. All right, guys. And of course, this has, you know, your pretty much standard point and click adventure style game type of things here. You click on the environment trying to find uh, different things to interact with and, you know, move around uh, to move yourself forward. So, for an example, we go over here and click on this little switch thing here. All right. And yes, he just shoved that into his chest. Now, here's where things get a little bit off the beaten path of normal. Uh, point and click adventure style games like for instance there is absolutely no menu system i can scroll around the screen here there's nothing whatsoever basically whatever you collect is automatically kind of thrown into his chest and then you will just have to find wherever it is you have to click on for that item to be interacted with so as an example you can see he just kind of automatically does it on his own and that's a little unusual i will say for a point and click adventure game. There's not much, too much experimentation with an inventory system. They kind of, I don't know if they streamlined it, if that's what they really wanted it, but it does make things slightly easier as far as inventory management and things like that go. There's still puzzles in this game. Plus, trust me, there's plenty of puzzles and they are very difficult. Uh, but as far as that goes, that aspect of things is kind of simplified. I love this right here. It's little touches like this that made me kind of fall in love with Armor Croc, guys. It does have a fantastic sense of humor. And like I said, that animation, that claymation is just really awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue watching this because it's just hilarious. Ah, blue poop. We'll keep watching. Yeah. He ate the poop. And apparently turned into a motorcycle. So that's just an example of the animation. Just the humor and the art style behind this game. It's a very unusual looking game, obviously. But it has a lot of charm to it. It has a lot of style to it. And that's definitely what I liked about this game, guys. It wasn't, it wasn't your standard, you know kind of looking game it really is different and like i said this animation this artwork was incredibly well done it had to be quite time consuming for them to do that now i'm not gonna get too far in this particular version get a load of that thing. because actually i'm way ahead of this point so i was actually gonna just go ahead and show you guys the starting area here ah i knew you'd come you've traveled far yet your true journey begins through the exit unseen yeah it's like the one on the roof up here <laughs> Let's push it. P -p -p that looks important. Let's hop over him. Yes. Let's press the button. Now, one really cool thing about Armor Crowd, guys, something I think is kind of a new different for this game, is that you actually kind of play both characters. You're not only this weird looking, you're not only just Mike J. Nelson, I forgot what this guy's name is, but you're also the dog as well. You can control his little companion simply by just clicking on him and switching characters. In certain areas, obviously he can only have access to, which is really friggin' neat, I think, uh, because you kind of get to see the world through his eyes, which as you can see is a little messed up and a little weird. He also can find items for you and collect items for you. Like for instance, he just ate something that we're gonna need in a bit. 
But not only that, like you said, you can see you see the world through his eyes. So, for instance, there's a mysterious floating symbol there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it actually looks like that symbol's different from my playthrough. It's, so I guess maybe it's randomized uh, what that symbol will be. That symbol will be, which is kind of neat. I'm hearing some funky music. I was like, what is that? All right, anyways. But yeah, you, gotta, you get to play as a dog, not only as the main character. You kind of have to use both of their... I don't want to say abilities, but you know, they, you kind of have to use them in combination to accomplish certain puzzles, get to certain areas, and do certain things. So now he's gonna—we're gonna switch back to him. He's gonna cough that up, and it's another switch, which of course we're gonna go ahead and grab and shove into our ch chesticle. There, we're gonna climb over this guy. Now, there's just like other weird little things. I kind of just like are a little weird. Like if you click on the edge of this door here, sometimes you'll go through the door automatically. But sometimes if you're just clicking on certain doors, you have to click all the way off off to the side of the door to get through it. It's just little things like that that just make it feel not necessarily as polished as you would expect it to be. So here we go. I'm going to put this in there. Again, I didn't really have to manage any inventory. He kind of did on his own. And we're going to go ahead and climb on top of this guy. Again, I've played this game for a little while, so... I'm not too, too far ahead, but I'm a little bit more farther ahead with certain puzzles here and there. I just want to go ahead and spoil some of this for you so that way you can see what you necessarily can expect in this game. I'm going to hold on. i got to pull that switch. But again, you know, there's a lot of things here. Like I said, it's the style, the charm, and the music of the game that's going to sell you on this game. Um, and if, if, if you're not a person who's into this kind of animation, if you're not into the claymation, if you're not into the style, the strangeness of the universe and everything that you're seeing here, you might not enjoy this game. Like Greetings, friend. I am Abraham Lincoln. For instance, Abraham Lincoln. What the hell does that mean? I have no idea. What is that particular puzzle for? <sighs> I have no idea. So we're going to continue going up here. Now, this is kind of the area that I'm actually kind of uh, exploring still. I've gotten a little bit more deeper ahead, but I just kind of want to... was not good. I just kind of wanted to show this area off a little bit. I'm going to actually probably go ahead and load into my game, because like I said, I'm a little bit farther ahead. Actually, you know what? Really quickly, can I... No, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to load into my game. Now, this is another thing that I just wanted to show off that's a little strange, so I'm going to go ahead and save. And that's kind of it. I'm hitting save a hundred times. It doesn't necessarily confirm your save other than the fact that it kind of appeared there. It's just one, it's just again, it's just those little weird things that are just not polished that you notice um, that, you know, it, it just gets a kind of under my skin. It's not a big deal, it's just something I noticed. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, you know, take away from the game, but you can see why the game was delayed. Now, some people have encountered bugs in this game, and I feel like I should mention that because it's kind of the elephant in the room. And what I'm going to say about the bugs is that I have not encountered them. I have either been very lucky or unfortunate, but I have not encountered bugs in this game. Now, some people have said that they've met, encountered game-breaking bugs that basically forces them to restart over again. Now, if those exist, of course, obviously they exist. Too many people are, you know, talking about it for not for it to be real. But what I will say is that, one, they're going to patch that stuff out. Uh, and two... It doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't purchase this game. It's something that they're going to patch out. It's something they're going to fix. Um, and I really, like I said, I didn't run into it if, during my playthrough. Now, have I beaten the game? Of course not. I've only gotten so far. But it's not necessarily, to me, that big of a deal. I think it's just something that you should keep in mind. All right, so I'm a little ahead, like I said here. Uh, I just solved one of the puzzles. Okay, what I okay, and right now, to be honest with you, I'm trying to kind of figure out what I need to do here. Um, I know we just got a part. Yeah, we just got a part. So let's go back down there. Okay, go back down, back down. There you go. So we're gonna go back down here. Like I said, some of the puzzles can be very challenging. Like there was this particular one where you had to uh, use a musical thing and it was Thanks, very Beaky. confusing that really helps yeah, yeah beaky's the best okay is this on is this thing on yet nope totally not on yet damn it okay 
This isn't where I need to be right now. I need to figure something else out yet, yeah, still. We're gonna go in here. Because this is where I activated something. I put this yellow thing in here, and now nothing is going on. Which I find strange. Can we push the button? Push the big rat button? Push the button. Aha! Magic has occurred! What the hell does this mean? I don't know. We're gonna go look. But things are activating, things are happening. Which is good, but that looks like it was flowing upwards, so maybe the thing above us is ready to fly off on? I'm not really sure. Let's check it out. Maybe I'm being optimistic here. Maybe I'm wrong. It has the same symbol on it. Oh, yes, it does work. Let's see if we can get on there. Okay, so power's flowing through it, but we're missing something. What are we missing? Well, come on. What, what am I missing here, game? One thing that is kind of frustrating is there's not necessarily any hints. There's no hand-holding in this game. And I mean, that in that sense, it is kind of like traditional um, point-and-click games. There's absolutely no hand-holding. If you're a person who likes a hint system, you're not going to have it. You're going to have to figure things out by yourself. Um, oh, you know what? Chances are, I just realized, now that the power's kind of restored, I, I'm guessing at least that's what that means. I switch, switch to Beaky here. Beaky jumps on the switch. I switch back to nice Mike work. T. Nelson here. Okay, is this console activated? Gosh dang it all. I guess I was hoping for too much there. Okay. There is a puzzle in this room that I'm trying to figure out how to get access to. So let's go ahead and flip this. Let's see if this can give us access to something else here. Okay, now there's this thing there. What does that exactly do for me? Okay. No, Beaky, no! Get back on the switch. Bad dog. You're bad. You're a bad dog, Beaky. No, don't hop around like you're some sort of adorable pooch. Now see if that crystal lighting thing changes this in any way. Thanks, Beaky. That. Mm, nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when all else fails, let's go ahead and go back down here. Head back down. He'll follow me magic instantly, by the way, so I don't need to necessarily worry about that too much. Just clicking around here, see if I can find anything I missed. Doesn't look like it. I already did this, so I don't need to do this again. This is one of the puzzles, by the way. And it's actually already completed, that's why I can't really do anything with it. Okay, this was another puzzle. I completed that one. And there's still Abraham Lincoln, or whatever the hell his name is. Greetings, friend. I am Abraham Lincoln. I have no idea what this particular puzzle is. I'm sure it's some sort of hint towards something. But I mean, if you look at this, just look at this particular screen right here, how awesome looking this is and how difficult this must have been uh, to, you know, make, especially with clay. I mean, for God's sakes, I suck with clay. Okay, let's go in here. Okay, if I can pull, still pull that switch, that doesn't necessarily do anything for me. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So nothing in here. I have one more room I can check here. And if not, I'll just cry myself to sleep at night. But let's be honest here, how would that be different from any other night murder? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be any different. I should mention the game doesn't have any Steam um, um, controller support. It's all, of course, uh, your keyboard and mouse. Um, and the game does not have Steam cards or Steam achievements yet. Again, that's one of those things I think that they're still developing. They're probably going to have out uh, as quickly as possible as they can get it to be. So it's only just a matter of time before they have that stuff out. Okay, so I've checked this area. It's not here. Huh. Hmm. Martyr's stuck. And you would be correct. So we're going to go ahead and check that room one more time. There has to be something I missed in that room. Maybe there's like another switch. It's very possible I'm just retarded. Okay. Let's check this out. Okay, it's doing stuff. 
Okay, I'm going to push this guy here. Okay, let's go through this little door here again. Let's see if we can see if anything's changed. Again, this is all through Beaky's eyes. I really like this aspect of us switching between characters. I thought that was very neat. Um, oh dear God. If you're confused, by the way, that's not in English. I don't know what that particular scene is. You can activate it and... I think it's more story elements in the game that, that's being explained to you. Um, but to be honest with you, I have no idea what you said. And an unfortunate side effect of activating that particular cutscene and skipping it, by the way, is it also kind of kills the sound. And that's one of the bugs that I actually did encounter. Okay, so... Huh. I think I'm going to have to do more investigating. Again, it's that type of game where you're just going to kind of... Uh, tread back through areas, see if you can find a particular new item, a particular new thing that you can do. Um, and it's a game that just requires probably quite a bit of exp exploration and, you know, experimentation. I'm going to flip it to the crystal. There we go. So, okay, that's done. So... Maybe I, I need to go back and get the old switch? Hold on, get over there. Dog, hit the switch. I'm going to check this room one more freaking time. Please hit the switch. 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 Hit the switch. Hit the switch. Clickety clickety. Okay, or we'll just go downstairs. That works too. <laughs> uh, it's just little things like that, guys. It just... Like I said, it's a beautiful game. I really love the art style. I love the way the game looks. Uh, but the game just needs just a little more polish. A little more, you know, just tweaking here and there. All is in your hands now. The threshold has been crossed. I don't know what the hell that means. Clickety, 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 clickety. Okay, Beaky. Click on stuff. Eat the switch, Beaky. Eat the switch. Eat, eat the cube. Eat the cube, Beaky. Eat that son of a bitch. All right, fine. All right, Beaky, get your your weird poop-looking face in that hole over there. Get in, get in there. Get in there. You're a bad dog. Bad. Bad weird space dog. Bad. Find Daddy a clue. Find Daddy a clue. Daddy doesn't think there's a clue here, but he just wants you to go through here just to make sure. And yeah, it doesn't. Okay, eat the switch. Eat it. Eat the switch. Eat the switch. Eat the freaking switch. Eat it! Gosh dang it, Beaky! You have failed me again! Okay. Well, obviously, like I said, I have some more exploration to do, guys. Um, the point of this is, guys, is as simple as this. The, the game, artistically, is amazing. Soundtrack is awesome. The voice work, I really enjoy. It has really cool voice actors in it. The guy from Napoleon Dynamite, Mike J. Nelson, the guy who played Pinky in the Brain. A lot of cool voices. Um... In this game, I'm not sure if you played Pinky the Brain, but he's from Pinky the Brain, from what I understand. Um, and there's just, it has a lot of charm, it has a lot of cool style to it. As a game, it is fun, and it does have that challenging aspect when it comes to the puzzles and all that good kind of stuff. But the game does need a little bit more polish, just to just round out all the rough edges. And there is quite a few rough edges uh, that are needed to be rounded off. But again, I don't think that holds the game back from being an enjoyable amazing experience that definitely should be something that you should be looking at something that should be seen because it's a really cool looking game guys okay beaky this is your time to shine hit that switch all right good boy for the love of god console turn on oh boy well that's definitely where my video is gonna end because uh, I need to more explore around more. Maybe there's something I missed. Um, which is very possible. It's just that type of game. Sometimes things are hidden. Not necessarily well presented. And you need to kind of you know look for the details. Uh, to figure out how to move ahead. I'm going to just check one more thing. 
And if that's not it, I'm definitely calling the video. All right, that's definitely not it. Okay, well, either way, guys, I want to say big thanks to the developer and publisher for a chance to check out this amazing title. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share, guys, and I'll keep bringing you awesome indie games, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting up my Patreon page or my tip jar if you're feeling generous of heart. All tips go to improving the channel or future giveaways. Till next time, guys, play more indie games.